This chapter is going to be a series of videos uh, showing the process that I took to create the cover image uh, for this video series. Um, it, it will start in a bit of a look dev phase uh, where I'm going through some models that uh, I'm using, just going in and updating some UVs, texturing some stuff, creating shaders. Uh, it will touch on a bit of speed tree um, and all of this will be shown pretty quickly, just kind of a summary of how something, you know, how I would go about creating something like this. Uh, it's not going to be uh, too in-depth um, in this uh, section, but just kind of show you how this piece evolved over time. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I recorded the whole thing as I was working, and you can actually see I started out with a kind of different concept in mind, and it was kind of daytime, and then as the piece goes, um, you'll actually see that the lighting completely changes. Uh, I make some different design choices along the way as well, uh, and you can kind of see how that evolves over the uh, course of this uh, piece. So it's kind of, hopefully it'll... Uh, just give you some ideas uh, to how to uh, modify your own workflow as you see. Um, there's a million different ways to do something like this, of course, and a different million different paths you can take, but uh, this is a pretty standard procedure for the way I work. Uh, anyways, let's uh, jump right in, and we'll start with the first set of videos. And what's going to be happening is I'm just going to be narrating over top of uh, a very sped up version of uh, my work. So let's do it. So really just kind of jumping right in, uh, you can see we're starting off with uh, the large tower here. And this model uh, came from the internet. It was purchased by myself. Uh, and uh, it's, it's actually more of an architectural model. And I, I got it knowing that it would be a bit far in the background. Um, it's not really modeled to smooth or anything like that. And so really the, the first step of this process was kind of cleaning up this model. And to do that, I needed to break apart any objects I wanted to. Uh, I would need to go in and do what I'm doing here, which is assigning all of the new shaders to them. So basically going in and... Uh, you'll notice I'm I'm doing a, a little bit of shader work. Uh, you can see right here I'm kind of making some metal shaders, and you know overall I'm I'm going through and double checking and making sure that uh, shaders are assigned to actual objects and not simply assigned to faces. Uh, if you ever get an if you ever get a model that comes from 3D Studio Max or something like that. Uh, it may actually turn out to have a whole ton of face assignments, uh, which can be really problematic later. And so, you know, it's just really about trying to stay organized from the very beginning. So all of my shaders are being named correctly. Uh, I'll go through and name objects and just overall try and keep things clean from the beginning. Uh, I always find it's much easier to start working clean and, you know, do the, do the legwork uh, in the beginning to kind of try your best and you know you don't have to take a bunch of steps backwards to rename things or regroup things later you kind of have your main your main file set up another thing i want you to notice in this uh first section here is that i am working in a separate file uh so this this asset will be living in its own maya file and it will be referenced in to the lighting file All right, and so that's our uh, basically a first pass on that first model. So let's go over to our next one, which is going to be uh, this little small tower on the side, and just kind of going in, same thing, same process, uh, assigning all of our base shaders and getting names correct and separating any objects that I need to. All right, so in in this next part here, what's what's happening is uh, I I'm trying to establish. Uh, a nice little look dev scene for myself. So you can see I've got some spheres on the side there. Um, I'm going in and creating a camera and creating a lighting setup uh, that matches what's happening in my other scene. Um, 
And this file, what I'm going to do is actually export this out. And this look dev file will be in um, the main set of scene files that you'll get. Uh, but it's really just all about, you can see here, I'm kind of positioning that key light so that everything matches. Uh, I'm going to go in and get the LUT that I'm using in comp uh, established on the viewer as well. And uh, now that all that's set up and I have that file, uh, I'm actually starting on the look dev here. And so this first pass of look dev on the building, uh, because I'm not on this asset, uh, I'm not actually going to go in and texture paint every single piece um, because, again, it's it's a background asset. Uh, you know, I'm not getting super close to it, and I'm not going around it or anything. So I am actually being a bit lazy <laughs> as it is. And I'm going to start with just seeing how far I can get purely with tileable textures. And honestly, I may not even need to do any actual texture painting at all. Uh, I may be able to get away with a lot of uh, use of procedural shaders and procedural textures. And you can see right here, the first pass is kind of, you know, the UVs are pretty crazy and they're not really looking so good. So there is going to be a little bit of work to go into getting that stuff fixed up. Um, and so you can, you know, you just go in and pulling in all these different pieces and then assembling them. Just jumping ahead here, you can see... Uh, this is something I like to do a lot, especially when I'm working with these tileable textures, uh, is I do I do have my, I have that big sphere right in the front. Um, I was trying to set up the, the roof shader, and it was going to be procedural, and I wanted to make sure that I could see exactly what was going on, because the roof has a lot of detail in it, and, you know, I try and, I try and make sure my camera is fairly representative of where that asset's going to be. But I also want to still be able to tell what's going on in that shader. Um, so, you know, going in, you can see there and uh, remapping the texture to try and get a little bit of specular variation. And it's much easier to see that represented on the sphere for what's going to be mapped to the roof uh, while I've got that close up. Um, and so, you know, we'll just kind of go in and uh, you can see there for a second I had a reference image up as well. And so I want to Another thing is I am always surrounding myself with reference. Uh, it's very important to always have that reference of the objects you're making or objects that are representative uh, of them, you know, around you at all times. Yeah, going in and just winging it yourself is going to be extremely challenging and you'll end up wasting a lot of time because you'll, you'll be sitting there trying to figure out what things look like. Uh, in situations where you know you're you're going in and all of the work is your own design, it's important to go in and block this stuff out uh, in Photoshop just in a design phase for yourself. Uh, you can see here the the procedural shader is also starting to take shape now. I'm kind of starting to get into some uh, different noises and that kind of thing. I've got a solid fractal to map into a V-ray blend material so that I can start kind of adding some variation to this. Uh, and you can see you know, using a 3D texture in this situation actually got me pretty far. So here what we're doing is, um, you know, same thing, just kind of moving on to another shader, but uh, this is another nice one to just kind of see how these things get kind of built up, uh, just starting with these procedural, you know, tellable textures and procedural textures. Uh, you know, just using things like solid fractal, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is actually the red paint. And the red paint on the columns, actually, I spent a lot of time really dialing in the specular because uh, I knew that you know, I, I really wouldn't be seeing a lot of this. But, you know, from far away, that, that highlight on the side of the column uh, was going to be important. Uh, the, the key light in this is kind of, you know, at this point, it's the sunlight. And so I do want to make sure I can see that highlight kind of traveling across the length of the column. Here you can see the, the red paint is feeling pretty good. Um, when I pulled the camera back, the, the columns had a, a nice amount of texture on them, but their UVs do still need to get modified so that they're not, you know, you can definitely see that seam right down the front. Uh, going on to the window shader, it's actually... Uh, I actually, rather than doing any sort of transparency, I chose to do um, a tileable 
you can see I started out with a bulge texture here, and then I ended up switching that to a, a grid so that I could get that texture going across the windows. Um, so I kind of messed with that for a second and ended up with a pretty cool result. And there you can kind of see it, just adding in a little bit of a border and messing around with that bulge texture a little bit uh, to really get this thing kind of sold. And again, you know, I'm, I'm even though my, my camera is pretty close up right now, uh, generally speaking, I, I want to make sure I'm doing a lot of test renders from far away. You can see I pull the camera back right there to make sure I really uh, know what this asset's looking like from the distance it's going to be viewed. Uh, it's it's pretty pointless to go in and spend a lot of time texturing something really close up if you're not going to be viewing it. Uh, in this case, I'm getting close up just so I can see a little bit easier, which is fine, but just always going back and making sure uh, that you know what that asset looks like from uh, the correct viewing distance. Uh, and here you go. So we can, you know, gone in and I'm doing some final little touches on some of the the brick down at the bottom and what I'm actually going to end up doing is, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this and there's definitely more work to be done, but I'm going to clean out this file and save it out to a published uh, setting and then bring it in my lighting file here. So you can see I'll go into the reference editor, reload that reference, and then when I re-render my image, I'll have the, uh, so there you go, so you can see there's the updated brick across the bottom and I have that tower uh, with its most up-to-date shaders. Um, coming up next, uh, what I'm going to do is actually show the look dev for the rope. Uh, so here's the, the file, and I'm actually, I am doing this in the lighting file. Uh, what I wanted to do was actually get some V-Ray fur across this, and so I wanted to go in and, you know, I knew I wanted to get some sort of hair shader on that, and for the ropes that were close up, I wanted to make sure I had that bit of fuzz around the edge. Because uh, rope is actually, you know, especially old rope like this can fray out quite a bit. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure that I had that little bit of detail. Uh, it'll give it a nice kind of Fresnelli effect, even if I don't really see it, uh, you know, in, in that much detail. I'll still, I'll still feel it and I'll feel that specular highlight kind of wrapping around the object. Uh, and there will be a little bit of a silhouette breakup across the surface of it. You can see the, you know, the, the first render pass here is pretty thick. And I uh, just wanted to really get in there and, you know, get this dialed. And so I'm getting pretty close up to, to really get that feel for it. Uh, and then again, backing the camera up and seeing what it looks like from the correct distance. So... Hopefully you're kind of finding that pattern now. You can really see what it's like to get in there and, and mess with this stuff. So a lot of what's happening is, you know, going in and, and it's all about doing these constant shader tweaks and small changes uh, so you can really keep an eye on what's going on. And another thing, you know, I've gone in and created my V-Ray hair material now and assigned it to the fur. And it, you'll notice uh, the scene is actually quite heavy that I'm working in. And so a really important part of my process when I'm working is going in and I go in my render view and I have the render selected objects only checkbox turned on uh, so that I can isolate these objects and render only them. And that's on the Maya default render view actually. Um, and you can turn it on and the V-Ray frame buffer will obey it. And so you can see I'm, I'm pretty happy with the look of the uh, V-Ray for right now. And so I'm actually going to bounce over to Photoshop and the next step is going to be going in and getting a uh, texture running across the ropes uh, and through it. Uh, so I actually used a fiber texture, just the filter for fibers in Photoshop. And I went in and gave it a little bit of a blur and then uh, made sure that it was tileable because the UVs on that object were uh, laid out so that they could grab a tileable texture and work appropriately. Um, so I just wanted to get in there and, you know, clone stamp around and make sure everything was set up. And then I can bring that back over to Maya uh, and get my shader for the actual rope uh, geo object set up. 
And that's what's happening right here. I'm kind of going in and just using my black and white mask or my black and white uh, fiber texture. Uh, so I have something to remap the colors on and plug into the different channels on my shader to get something pretty cool. And so this is what the result is looking like. Uh, next up, we're bouncing over to Speed Tree. Um, this is a uh, Chinese style pine tree uh, that is called the, I don't know how to say it, I'm going to butcher it, but uh, it's right there in the browser, the Huang, uh, Huang Shan Pine. Again, I apologize <laughs> for my pronunciation of that. But, uh, you know, going in in Speed Tree here and utilizing their browser and their, um, you know, the, the, the trees that they have available. Uh, and I'm able to go in and randomize the seeds a little bit. And I also wanted to make sure that the, the trees had some weight to them. So I went in and just dialed some of those curves around uh, and, you know, basically created three different trees for myself uh, that I was happy with. And once I had those three trees, uh, I went in and I uh, needed to go and export Alembic files for them. And those Olympics can actually be loaded directly into a V-Ray uh, proxy if you wanted to, or you can go in and load them into Maya first. Uh, I actually chose to load them into Maya first. Um, you'll see that in one second here. But the, the reason I chose to bring them in directly was because I did want to see the objects and get the shaders set up. So you can see here it is um, getting that LUT loaded up in this file. Um, I wanted to make sure that the geo was working okay and everything was in order before I just tossed it directly into a V-Ray proxy. Uh, the other thing, you know, working with this is just, it kind of goes back to a cleanliness aspect where I can go in and uh, make sure that everything is in order and named correctly before I'm going to the V-Ray proxy. So you can see all of my shaders are named correctly so that in the V-Ray proxy when they get exported, uh, all of those pieces will come together and we'll end up with uh, a clean asset. So right here, uh, shaders are sorted, everything's looking good, and I'm going in and creating the V-Ray proxies for these objects. Um, these three V-Ray proxies were exported, and uh, I actually then saved out a Maya file with the proxy already loaded with the shaders assigned to it so that I could just simply import that into my lighting file and get them all placed. So our trees are all uh, in place here and just going in and you know I had those uh, I had those temp pine trees in there and I'm just going in and you know those those served their purpose uh, I, you know, those were just some free models from the internet, the old trees. So I wanted to make sure that I had ones that I could use and that I created myself. Uh, and so I'm just kind of going in and getting all of those trees placed. Um, once the trees are placed, I'm actually going to go in and get the ferns placed as well. It's the same fern from the two-sided shader video. And so just kind of starting the process of adding some vegetation to the scene and filling out and doing some set dressing so it's not feeling completely empty. And again, you can see it's, you know, lots of naming stuff and trying to stay organized. You can see, you know, from the very beginning, my, my outliner here was really uh, just these main set of groups. So, you know, I can, as I'm working, everything is has its place already. And so I'm not having to go back and, and you know, do that cleaning and organization phase when I'm already, you know, under the gun or stressed out or whatever. Everything's just in order. You know, from a production standpoint too, uh, that's really an important, an important thing to remember because you, you you may find out that you know you save your file at night and you come into work the next day, and you're on a different project, or maybe there was an emergency on another job, you know, and you're suddenly having to pass all of your work files to someone else. Uh, you don't want to be in the position where you're passing a messy work file to someone that's kind of, you know, makes you look bad and it can be embarrassing. So it was just, it's always a good idea to, uh, you know, not only is it embarrassing, but you're going to make that other person's life harder. Uh, and, you know, they're going to have a hard time going in and thinking like, oh man, this, this file could be 
a lot easier to work in than it is right now. Um, so cool. So we've got a render. Uh, all the assets came in pretty good. Shaders are working pretty good. Uh, definitely making some progress. So it's feeling pretty good. So this next uh, section here, uh, this is a, you know, I wanted to kind of showcase a little bit of the procedural texture work that was done. Uh, again, you know, with, with such a massive scene going in and by myself, you know, painting and uh, it, it becomes a little bit unrealistic to go in and paint every single object. So these guys, uh, this is a really nice model uh, done by an artist, uh, Yuri. And I'm gonna I'm gonna share his art station because uh, he was generous enough to let us use these models in the uh, video here. Um, so thank you, Yuri, and we'll have a link to your art station. But what I want to do, you know, you can see immediately what I'm doing is going in and starting to create my V-Ray blend shader. So I've got my brass kind of connected. Uh, I'm got my asset hooked up. And what I'm doing is creating a V-Ray Dirt shader uh, that can, you know, V-Ray Dirt texture that I can go in and start trying to find some of those edges, uh, you know, through the ambient occlusion so that I can start putting a different shader down in there. And you can see I'm, you know, starting to utilize some other procedural textures, like there's a stucco right there uh, to go in and, you know, try and hold that out even more. So... Uh, you know, it's it's kind of nice in V-Ray 3 that uh, you can utilize these 3D textures a little bit better. In V-Ray 2, a lot of them were not supported fully, so they kind of had some weird results, but they are supported much nicer in V-Ray 3 now. You can see it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of just dialing stuff. And uh, I've got that shader, my second shader, bright green, just so I can really see it. Um, and I really wanted to get in there, you know, and, and be able to, it's like, it's, I try and make my life easier while I'm doing this stuff. And I, I want to make sure I can see what I'm doing and understand what the texture itself is actually doing. Because if I'm doing a subtle change, you know, if I'm, I'm blending two kind of subtle shaders together, uh, it can be difficult to really dial this stuff and, you know, exact, see exactly what's going on because there, you know, there may be other, other pieces that are getting in the way. So now I'm trying to get that patina shader a little bit darker and go in and we can kind of see uh, how this guy ends up uh, looking, you know, he's getting pretty close and we can start importing him in. Cool. Uh, you can definitely see, uh, the frogs are in, they're looking pretty cool. Um, uh, again, you know, these, these assets are all kind of small, so I'm not really worrying about it too much, but, uh, this was actually, after I got them in, uh, you know, the, what happened next here is I, I felt like the pine needles around the trees were falling very dark. Um, you know, the, there is GI and everything in the scene, but overall I was a little disappointed in how they were looking. So uh, in this next uh, section here, what I ended up doing was place some rectangular lights across the bottoms of the trees to try and shine some light uh, down onto them. So you can see I'm going in here uh, with my rectangular light and I'm using that directional function so I can really kind of get some light shining uh, up on it uh, and really just trying to get those uh underside of the pine needles a little bit brighter. And so here you can kind of see, you know, we've, we've got our three rectangular lights under the trees and I'm just trying to get in there and, and see exactly uh, what this is going to look like. So I'm turning my render settings up a little bit and we'll be able to see a nice quality render. So cool. Uh, we've got our render. It's looking really nice. And now we can kind of move forward with the rest of the set. So Yuri also uh, gave us these rocks and cliffs. And, uh, you know, so we, I'm going in here and trying to block in the 
the whole cliff area around the set. So uh, I had a bunch of pieces of rocks, and I wasn't entirely sure what the shape would be, so I was kind of designing with the 3D objects, uh, which is always fun. Um, if you have time to do that kind of stuff, it's great. So it's really going in there and just creating all the V-Ray proxies I need so that I can start piecing these together. You can see lots of translating later. Uh, we're starting to get uh, the base in a really nice spot. Uh, you know, it doesn't feel repetitive by any means. Uh, it's just a lot of duplicating uh, these set pieces around and getting everything to a really nice spot. For the, you know, the next part of this, we had to go in uh, and I had selected the rock pieces here and I wanted to make sure that I could uh, make sure that the, the lighting was looking good on them as well. So I got all the pieces here and I wanted to just at least assign a base shader and, you know, start doing some initial test renders. And when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm going in and, and doing the isolate select uh, so that, you know, a lot of this, because this, these objects were also going to be procedural shaders, I wanted to make sure that during this process of shader tweaking uh, that I'd be able to see my renders very quickly. And so there you can see it. Uh, it's looking pretty cool. And so the, you know, the, the next step of this, uh, it's going to be placing a lot of the foreground rocks, um, you know, getting in and doing final shader tweaks. And then the, the uh, end result looks something like this. And so this is the uh, current progress as it is. Uh, you can see the, you know, all the little arches and foreground rocks are not in their final position as of yet. Uh, but it's it's starting to come together uh, and feel pretty cool. So making some progress.